Hey, what up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you with the coverage of WWE Monday Night Raw tonight. Tonight's show kicked off with none other than Brock Lesnar coming down to the ring with Paul Heyman delivering his own Dr. A Thubbin, I'm sorry, Dr. A Thugonomics rap to everybody. Thank you everybody for out there wishing me uh, happy birthdays on the Twitter and on the Facebook and everything like that. You guys have uh, sent me a ton, a ton of stuff out there and I really do appreciate it. It humbles me a ton to know that I have so many people out there that, that thought of me today uh, on the day that I was mostly thinking about my hero, Hulk Hogan's birthday himself. I didn't wear the NWO shirt like I said I was going to. Here's a Hulkamania balloon from 1983 that I've had. This is, Oh, 1985, I apologize. But this balloon is almost as old as I am. Crazy banana stuff right there for you. Here's my Hulk Hogan card, postcard that he mailed me back in 1990. But, um, you know, the, the Cena versus Lesnar, it's going to be good. Uh, basically, Brock said he was going to leave uh, the arena. He was going to go eat. And Brock made the promise. Well, not really Brock, but Paul Heyman said it. that He's coming back. Uh, that's not the last we saw of Brock. More than likely, Brock's going to come back and beat Cena up at the end of the night. But uh, Roman Reigns was in our opening match of the night. Uh, it was a, a match that was set up by the Authority. The Authority said that they were having a special opponent for Roman Reigns. They were going to have uh, somebody to humble him. I honestly thought it was going to be Kane. Kane did come out. He's back as corporate Kane with no uh, mask again. Eh, it is what it is. There's only so many things you can do with Kane. Um, they're going to keep him around, I think, as long as he really wants to stay there. And I think as long as he's cashing a check, I think he's fine with it. Um, I don't really know of any Kane matches that are going to get me pumped up anymore. Uh, I've seen them all, but I guess if you use them as like a special attraction sort of thing on Monday Night Raw every once in a while, the Roman Reigns versus Kane match last week uh, was pretty good. Might did go back and check it out. But Kane came out and said that the uh, selected opponents for Roman Reigns, trying to humble him down before SummerSlam when he would face Randy Orton, would be the tag team of Ryback's. Yes, two men taking on one, everybody's favorite Monday Night Raw style of match. It was... Um, Right, Axel going down there, and honestly, the first thing they did when they came out, the first thing I thought of, I cannot believe I thought these were the guys that were going to be taking on the Usos for the Tag Team Championships. I hate it when they put tag teams out there against one guy, and because they're building that one guy towards a pay-per-view match, he has to beat them. How many times have we seen John Cena or you know Triple H or anybody out there who's in that main event spot beat the Tag Team Champions? Your Tag Team Champions should be set up as your best guys. I know Ryback right, Axel isn't there, but... I think that out of the uh, tag division, except for the Usos, uh, who are keeping their championships as of right now, who I don't even think are booked for SummerSlam, you know, who's out there really winning matches right now? Right, Axel's the guys that you see in and out on TV. Um, you know, the, we've had uh, Cody Rhodes, Stardust, and Goldust in the back eating the pot brownies week after week. Who knows what the hell they're building to? Um, but uh, basically. Um, you know, Roman Reigns went out there, and Ryback's job, I think, was just trying to, to break him down. They got disqualified by running Roman Reigns into the ring post on the outside. The rap asked for them to end the bell, and that's when, basically, uh, they said that they were just going to, you know, put the beat down on him. Roman Reigns, surprise, surprise, found a way to beat off both men, leaving both of them laying, uh, looking up at the lights. And Roman Reigns is going to be going in strong against Randy Orton at SummerSlam. And uh, it's going to be one of those uh, that really gets you pumped up. Um, I think this is going to be a match that really does surprise us. I'm not the biggest fan of Randy, uh, but he does pull out good matches on, on good cards. And uh, Roman is a guy that we haven't seen wrestle uh, in singles matches, a, a, you know, a good 10, 15-minute match. And so that's one of the things that I'm really looking forward to. Great to see the, the return of Rob Van Dam coming out. Uh, first time we've seen him in a few weeks, I think since uh, the last pay-per-view uh, due to injuries. So, uh Rob Van Dam. August 11th coverage of Monday Night Raw tonight. And what do you know? They go right from the Roman Reigns versus Randy Orton feud going right into Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. Honestly, in my mind, one of the greatest feuds that is going on inside of WWE right now. I think a lot of people are really uh, you know, hungry for this match. Uh, we get to see Seth Rollins going into a one-on-one -on -one match against Rob Van Dam, playing off the story that uh, basically they were giving the fans what they wanted last week. Uh, when uh, basically the opponent was switched at the last minute by the authority. Uh, he's Slater going up against Seth Rollins. Uh, you know, I, I would make it would make more sense to me if Seth Rollins would have had some sort of a squash match to me with Heath Slater uh, trying to get back that win from last week in record time. 
Uh, but they went with the return of Rob Van Dam, which for everybody was really excited. We haven't seen him in a few weeks, uh, I believe, since the last pay-per-view. Um, some sort of an injury. I can't remember off the top of my head what it was, but it was always great to... Rob Van Dam on Monday Night Raw one more time. These guys always work really, really good. Uh, I remember, uh, you know, um, Seth Rollins turning around uh, the the uh, Rob Van Dam promo, saying that basically uh, when he was five years old, he was he was turning on Monday Night Raw uh, to watch guys like Rob Van Dam. Maybe it wasn't Rob Van Dam, but maybe it was like ten years ago, whatever. Raw Rob said one time in a promo, but these guys just glide around the ring. It looks so effortly, uh, you know, effortly flawless, and it's just, it's just good stuff. I mean, I, I know Rob Van Dam isn't a guy who's going to be there forever, um, but I would love to see a real promo between Rob Van Dam and Seth Rollins instead of just Monday Night Raw matches. Uh, but when they do put him on TV, uh, even though you know that you know Rob Van Dam isn't booked for SummerSlam, Seth Rollins is, so it's pretty obvious that Seth is going to get the win. It makes it a match that you want to keep your eyes on because you don't want to miss uh, what might be going down in this. Uh, once um, Seth Rollins did get the win with the curb stomp over Rob Van Dam, he went up to the top of the uh, ramp uh, where the Titan Tron is for to sort of pose uh, and and sort of show everybody that he won the match, only to be sort of spooked out by the um, Hulk Hogan presents that are at the top of the uh, ramp for the uh, Hulk Hogan celebration. I, I honestly thought that would kick off Raw tonight, but it looks like that might be something that they're playing up throughout the show with lots and lots of returns, maybe... I don't see them ending the show with it because it's the it's the go home to SummerSlam, but you never know. Maybe it might be the uh, the after Raw uh, sort of deal that they do for everybody in Portland to check out a whole bunch of uh, bonus stuff that doesn't make uh, TV. Um, but uh, definitely, um, you know, Seth Rollins was thinking that Dean Ambrose was hiding in the presence, and he was after giving up. It was a lot like you know uh, Mick Foley as Cactus Jack attacking Sting coming out of the present box. Uh, beating him up, chasing him all the way down to the ring, running him around before he finally jumped the rail and ran to the back. Dean Ambrose got on the back, and for a pop from everybody, for only nine ninety nine, you get to see Dean Ambrose kick Seth Rollins' ass for the first time in a one-on-one -on -one singles match. It's going to be a lumberjack match. It's going to be some fun stuff. I hope everybody's heating up for it because this is one of the matches that I'm really looking forward to. I know that I said that maybe because we had to wait so long for this match, uh, maybe I'd chilled off on it, but definitely this this with you know Dean Ambrose busting out of the present, running down and around the ring. This is definitely something I want to see sooner than later. What up, everybody? This is Steve Bridge coming to you with the WWE Monday Night Raw, August 11th. Uh, live continuous coverage here on YouTube, and honestly, I hated what I just saw, but I loved it at the same time. I thought that this was honestly one of the uh, cheapest forms of heat that the WWE could pull out. I thought that it was really low to pull out the card of Daniel Bryan cheating on Bree with his physical therapist. Uh, basically, uh, you know, Stephanie McMahon brought uh, uh, Daniel Bryan's uh, physical therapist out of the crowd, brought her into the ring, goaded her in uh, to saying that uh, she was having an affair with Daniel Bryan, uh, that basically why Bree was out on the road wrestling and shooting Total Divas. Uh, Daniel Bryan was uh, getting his own workout at home. Uh, basically, they said she said that it started out very innocent, uh, but now the uh, the girlfriend, uh, not the girlfriend, she was not our girlfriend. No, no, the physical therapist uh, basically, you know, had lost her boyfriend uh, due to the affair. She had nowhere to go. Uh, she didn't know what to do. Um, basically, uh, you know, Stephanie McMahon strong donned her into admitting this. Bree came running down. Bree immediately was saying that this was not true. There was no way in the world that this could happen. Her uh, husband loved her. Uh, basically, you know, Steph McMahon just kept on rubbing it in, just pushing on that bruise of Bree Bella. And um, basically, the cat fight started from there, and uh, they were flipping out, rolling around the ring. Steph McMahon promised uh, that basically uh, um, they, they, they were going to finish this tonight. They weren't going to wait till SummerSlam, so more than likely, there's more to come from this. But honestly, in my opinion, this is one of the segments from Monday Night Raw that we're going to want to forget. I loved the ECW cat fight with them rolling around on the ground, pulling at each other's hair. Uh, you know, Bree trying to, the, to put Stephanie into the yes lock. Um, you know, I, I liked that part of it, but just basically having to bring up the, uh, the marriage and uh, try and, you know, cast this evil spell of a uh, divorce. Or not a divorce, but just the affair over them is just kind of low. WWE, I think, is, 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 is that you're better than that. And um, I don't know. A, a lot of times uh, you see with wrestling, you know, just a, a little worked angle 
of uh, you know a husband and wife uh, you know having some sort of a, uh, a an indifference. Uh, same things going on in NXT with uh, Natalia and with uh, uh, Tyson Kidd. Uh, but you know <laughs> the the only reason why woman ended up with Chris Benoit in the first place is because <laughs> Kevin Sullivan booked it that way, and in order to keep up the kayfabe. He had them spending so much time with each other that they actually honestly fell in love. And, and um, there's been other, you know, wrestling uh, angles that have started like that. Uh, of course, the, uh, um, the the breakup of Austin and Deborah. Uh, what are some other ones? Steve McMichael and Deborah. Deborah's just bad. I mean, I mean she's got the look, but uh, she doesn't have the look, if you know what I mean. <laughs> but, uh, you know, eh, it is what it is. This is going to be an awesome match. I'm hoping for more to come because honestly, this—I mean, who's gonna, who's not going to say they're not pumped for John Cena versus Brock Lesnar? Uh, you know, Paul Heyman and Brock being on Raw is a big plus. We're going to see John Cena in a little bit, uh, but honestly, in my mind, you know, uh, Bree versus Stephanie is the main event of, of, uh, of a SummerSlam. It's been one that I've been really wanting to see for a long time. I'm pumped. I'm sure you're pumped. We're pump we're we're banging the fists up. Yeah, who wants to party? It's SummerSlam. I've been trying to tell you all since WrestleMania 30 that Jack Swagger was going to be the Shawn Michaels of the Real Americans. Nobody wanted to listen to me at that time. Basically, Jack Swagger took Zeb Coulter, the, the best manager going in the game, the best slogan, and the best theme song. We the people! I think that, that Swagger's the man. I've been following him for a long time. Swagger vs. Cesaro hooked up again on Monday Night Raw tonight, the August 11th of 19. Wait a minute. The, I'm, I'm going back in time, Marty Jannetty style. Uh, but uh, Jack Swagger on the August 11th, 2014 edition, the go-home edition to, to SummerSlam of Monday Night Raw, beat Cesaro for the second time in a row. Uh, they had a matchup a few weeks ago. On, uh, on uh, SmackDown, it's not like Cesaro, even though he's not winning matches, is looking horrible. They even did it where basically um, Cesaro hurt Swagger's uh, ribs, so he's going to be going into SummerSlam, uh, basically not at the full strength. He wasn't able to hit the most perfect uh, power, uh, not power, the, the most perfect Swagger bomb of all time. But Jack Swagger, to me, is, is on a hot streak right now. He's been going into SummerSlam. Uh, Rusev came out to try and you know put scare into the Swagger camp, the real Americans, but they're not they're not gonna back down. They're gonna be waving the real American flag. I wish I had one here to, to swing back and forth, but a great match from Cesaro and Swagger. Um, as much as I love Swagger and I love seeing the things that they're doing, I know that uh, Cesaro is a bright spot in the future of it to be. I can only hope that uh, you know somewhere around the corner they do have plans for him to pop up and, and do something big and memorable because uh, seeing him losing matches again uh, really hurts because I was really believing and I was really thinking that there was things behind the things that people were saying that uh, he was on the uprise that you know before long he was going to be in those main event spots um, but uh, it seems like you know back at the end of his uh, you know United States championship reign when he was just dropping match after match after match um, I don't know I look at this guy and it's just like how do you not see that this guy's a million bucks and be an awesome main eventer for you but uh, We'll have to see how it goes down from here. Um, SummerSlam. Swagger gets the win tonight. We'll have to see. I'm picking Swagger over Rusev. It's going to be a good match, everybody. Get fired up. Holy shit. I cannot believe what I have just seen. WWE is the house of upsets these days. I put the tweet out there that I would streak naked through the streets. If Eva Marie got the win, and it was just that. We got a match. AJ Lee going up against Eva Marie. I think that, honestly, since AJ's return, she's had more matches against um, Eva Marie than I think anybody on the entire roster. I think this is probably the fourth time uh, yeah, that they've matched up, either on Raw or SmackDown. And this was looking to be one of those brutal, classic matches uh, that you don't want to look at, but you have to because it's on TV. Um, this match was saved by Paige's music playing about a minute into it. She came skipping down to the ring, and because of the outside interference, we were able to see... I, I don't even know how to say it. AJ Lee roll up. 
<laughs> oh no, <laughs> I couldn't even say it right. We got to see Eva Marie roll up AJ for the pin. One, two, three in the middle of the ring. Uh, we saw Paige grab a microphone. Uh, she laid out her own Dr. Thugonomics rap, much like Paul Heyman did in the very beginning. It was more of a poem, uh, just basically saying that she was going to skip out of SummerSlam with a Divas Championship. And that's what I think is going to happen. Once AJ awoke, uh, she took her frustrations out on Eva Marie, pounding her down into the mat. I, um, I heard some good things and some bad things about Eva Marie on NXT this week. Uh, basically, that it's good that she's down there in developmental, working as much as she can. Um, God help her. She is one of the best-looking divas. It took Kelly Kelly a long time for her to slip into a role in the WWE where, you know, maybe around 2011, she became watchable uh, as, a, uh, as, a, as a wrestler. And even then, it wasn't that good. And I think Eva is going to be that girl, much like Sunny, that they try to make into that, you know, the franchise girl. As you know, she's not the best wrestler, but she's the best looking, so we're going to send her out on all the promotional things. She's going to be on some posters. Every once in a while, we're going to try and put her in a big match on a pay-per-view, trying to get some uh, some eyes on her. But, um, wow. I mean, Heath Slater getting a win last week over Seth Rollins in the main event. That's one thing. Eva Marie from Total Divas getting a win on Monday Night Raw. Against the Divas champion, that's another thing. That's a wowzers right there. That's definitely something that we're going to be thinking about for a long, long time on Monday Night Raw. <laughs> Monday Night Raw, 50, 1,500 episodes, DVD comes out. Guarantee it, we're going to get that one. Sorry, I dropped a piece of candy corn. I forgot that I was making a video. I thought I was just talking out loud in the middle of nobody. But, uh, wow. <laughs> Eva Marie, who would have thought? They tried to play it up real big. As uh, Monday Night Raw went along, uh, you had uh, earlier in the night Roman Reigns going up against Rybaxel, and uh, you know in the big sort of semi-main event of the night, we saw Sheamus uh, make his return to WWE since coming back. Since I think the story that was out that was that he had the flu, and that is uh, one of the reasons why I, I believe he didn't make a main event taping that he was uh, in, advertised for. Uh, we also saw John Cena come out and give a kick-ass promo. He, he gives one of the best promos there is in the business when he comes out all fired up. There were some times when it seemed like he was just doing the hokey-pokey deal. But uh, honestly, I think that uh, he knows that this whole pay-per-view is resting on his shoulders. And this isn't any other normal pay-per-view. This is one of the ones that is going to give uh, you know the people around the world that are signing up for the WWE Network tomorrow uh, a reason to show up. You know, you ha He had to give people a reason why, uh, you know, they wanted him, they, they, they want them to show, uh, to sign up for the WWE Network. That was pretty awesome. We had a match, uh, Slater versus Dolph Ziggler with The Miz out there on commentary. Um, Ziggler uh, got a little bit mixed up on the outside and Slater got a win uh, via countout. Uh, Slater's winning streak continues. He's now 2-0 and in the past two weeks on Monday Night Raw. Hopefully they don't start doing what, what they did with Dolph Ziggler, where he started having a two-win streak on Raw, where he would win a, match, win a match on Raw, lose a match on SmackDown, come back on Raw, and act like the loss on SmackDown never happened. We'll have to, we'll have to look closely at that one and see how it works out. But uh, the Sheamus versus Norton one, they, they tried real hard. I, I see some people tweeting that they liked the match. Honestly, in my opinion, I know these guys are past world heavyweight champions. You know, these are guys that could slip into the main event role in, in WWE at any time. But honestly, to me, um, it just went too long. Uh, in, in my opinion, we saw, you know, um, you know Orton slipping out of the Brogue kick. We, we saw Sheamus slipping out of the RKO. Um, but it, 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 this was a good match to set it up. It, it was sort of, you know, saying that, you know, they, they weren't just making it easy for, uh, for Orton to slip into SummerSlam and have an easy match. Uh, you know, we, we saw earlier uh, them selling the injury of Jack Swagger, you know, with him getting his ribs beat up by Cesaro. Even though Cesaro is a guy who isn't even booked for the pay-per-view, they're still making him look like a strong guy. you got to make Sheamus look good, um, you know, going in. But Roman Reigns uh, versus uh, Orton is going to be a good one. Uh, definitely a match that I'm really looking forward to on the SummerSlam show. Uh, this, this match didn't take anything away from that. 
Uh, it shows you that Orton's fired up and Orton's ready. Maybe he's even thinking that, you know, Orton, you know, beat a better opponent tonight. So maybe he is ready to go. Um, but I'm still picking Reigns to win that one. I think that's going to be a good match. One of those secret gems on there, like I said earlier. I'm just looking forward to Roman Reigns fighting in a match uh, that's going to be longer than 15 minutes and see how this guy is able at selling and, um, you know, see how he's able to, to put together a match that's still believable uh, with him looking like a badass, but, uh, you know, being vulnerable uh, in the match as well. Let's get ready for Hulk Hogan's birthday. That's coming up. Uh, going to be main eventing the show, um, honestly, to my surprise. Maybe Brock's going to come out and kill him. We'll see. Well, that was it. Hulk Hogan's birthday didn't seem like as big of a... A deal as it once did, uh, but I think the inevitable did happen that everybody saw coming. Uh, once all the uh, the guests were invited down to the video, uh, down to the ring, they played a special, uh, uh, was that Bob Dylan song with a uh, uh, Hulk Hogan, uh, This Is Your Life style video showing all the greatest moments of him slamming Andre and all sorts of things. And um, we got the guests, uh, the guest list, we've got Roddy Piper, we've got Mr. Paul Orndorff, we've got Jimmy Hart, we've got the NWO, Kevin Nash and Scott Hall, Ric Flair was in the house, uh, lots of big names from the past. Um, once they all got down there, we got to see Scott Hall uh, in the ring, ask everybody to take a survey. Kevin Nash led everyone in the singing of Happy Birthday not quite sure what everybody else was doing there. Uh, no fucks were given for uh, Paul Orndorff, not whatsoever. Um, basically, uh, I think this is one of the first times they, 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 they're, they're, I, they're not doing backstage pass, but they're showing the uh, the after party. And here comes a cake with Titus O'Neil and Heath Slater coming down to the ring for the Hulkster. Um, I, I thought that maybe they would just record this. I know that after Raw, they're doing a special in-look at uh, John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. Much like a special UFC, um, you know, special hyping up the big fight. I, I think everybody's hyped up, but it wouldn't hurt to give it us a little more. Um, honestly, it was cool to see the NWO in the ring once again. Anytime you get to hear the NWO music, I know that Kevin Nash used it in 2011 when he made his return with the, the whole CM Punk thing. We got Titus O'Neil and Heath Slater about to hit each other in the face with a cake. Trying to make it his... Oh, nope, Titus just took it in the face. All over him. He's got the red and yellow frosting on him. He's about to whoop up on Heath Slater. But Hogan, I, I think the, the, the big deal about it was he took off the uh, the uh, Hulk Rule shirt uh, to reveal the NWO tank top. But um, Brock Lesnar comes and interrupts the party, and he didn't come down there uh, to basically to, to put on a... Uh, um, you know, put on a party hat. He he got up in Hogan's face and told him, party's over, Grandpa. And it looked like he was going to take out everybody in the whole group. The only guy that looked like he was beefing up in there, besides for Hogan, was Mr. Por Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. He thought he was still going to be able to take a fight to Brock Lesnar. Um, it almost looked like Flair. It almost looked like Roddy Piper. Uh, we're scared. Here's another cake coming into the ring and a table set up. This one's pretty freaking big. Love to see an awesome moment of uh, Triple H or Vince McMahon come down to the ring for this one. I know when they've done things like for Ric Flair, uh, they had a big old thing for his retirement. And then once the show went off the air, uh, we got Undertaker and uh, uh, and Vince coming down to the ring to greet Flair in the ring. Uh, and it's a nine ninety nine happy birthday uh, cake for Hulk. But uh, this was fun. This was really cool. Uh, Super Cena came running down to save the day. I guess he is really going to wear that red shirt. I was thinking that was going to be a kid's exclusive. He, he looks really weird in those khaki pants. The, the thing that sticks out the most to me are those red knee pads. Uh, I don't... And they're singing again. But um, Cena versus Brock is going to be huge. I mean, that was the one main thing of this whole deal. Awesome to get the Hulkster on our birthday, August 11th, 1981 for me, whatever... I think he's 61. He doesn't look 61, and it doesn't feel like he's 61. He's still my age in my mind, Hulk. Let's go out there. WrestleMania 31, Hogan versus Cena. Let's get it done. Peace out, everybody. See you guys at SummerSlam. Oh, man. August 11th, the WWE Monday Night Raw coverage coming to you tonight. Honestly, I hated what I just saw, but it was so good. I thought that, honestly, uh, Daniel Bryan... 
Um, you know, being called a cheater by Stephanie McMahon, Stephanie McMahon being as, 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 as going as far as basically to, uh, you know, bring out the physical therapist and say, uh, basically, uh, 